Kiwi gang. Today we are doing fruit nutrient density tier list part two. Today I'm going to be doing this next row. If you guys enjoy this, make sure to subscribe, comment, and like, and I can do a part three. Let's go. Starting off, we have dates. Now dates are extremely overrated. Recently, they've got this reputation as some sort of superfood, when in reality, they just aren't. Looking at the vitamins, not much going on at all. Looking at the minerals, it's a decent source of potassium, but that's pretty much it. Looking at the carbohydrate profile, there's almost no fiber. It's pretty much just straight sugar. As far as antioxidants, it's very average. It does have some polyphenols and flavanols, but nothing super unique and also just not a high overall volume. Sure, it does have a few benefits. Uh, it's good as a quick energy source. So if you're an athlete or if you're on a hike or something, it can be good to get some quick calories in. Also, it's a good natural alternative to processed sugar when used as a sweetener. Also, I got to address the whole dates and butter thing. Recently, I've seen a trend of a lot of people eating dates with butter inside of them as a snack, like dates with an entire tablespoon of butter in each one. Now, I'm sure they taste good, but let me be clear. Unless you're actively trying to gain weight, that is probably one of the last things I would ever recommend consuming as a snack. It's, it's straight sugar and fat. There's barely any nutrients, barely any fiber, barely any protein. It's literally a recipe for weight gain. Rant over. Overall, I am putting dates in the D tier. Next, we have cranberries. Now, cranberries are very interesting. They're actually very beneficial for females specifically. So ladies, listen up. On the vitamin side, they have a little bit of vitamin C. They're a very good source of vitamin E. As far as minerals, they got some copper, some manganese. They're very high in fiber, as most berries are. They're also very high in antioxidants. They're one of the most antioxidant-rich fruits. But what makes cranberry special is they have a unique polyphenol called A-type proanthocyanidins. And what these do is they prevent bacteria like E. coli from sticking to the bladder walls. So they're really effective for preventing UTIs, especially in women. So if your girlfriend's like drinking cranberry juice and shit and saying it's for female health reasons, she's actually not being scammed. There's actual scientific benefit to it. Cranberries also have some other antioxidants like quercetin and mericetin. Overall, great fruit. I am putting this in the A tier. Next, we have green apples. Now, if you saw part one, you know red apples are one of the most overrated fruits on the planet. Green apples are no different. They're just as nutrient devoid as red apples. You look at the vitamins, not much going on there. You look at the minerals, nothing there as well. It's got an average antioxidant profile. Sure, it is pretty high in fiber, just like the red apple. On top of that, it's got even less aura than the red apple. Like who the hell is eating a green apple? You look like even more of a nerd. This is going in the D tier. Next, we have pomegranate. Now, pomegranate is very weak in vitamins and minerals. It doesn't really give you that much of anything. It does have a moderate amount of fiber. However, it is extremely high in antioxidants. Specifically, it has a type of elagitannin called punicalogens, which are one of the most powerful antioxidants, and they are pretty much unique to pomegranates. They're great for brain health, gut health. They have anti-cancer effects. They've been shown to lower your cortisol. Tons of different health benefits. There's also an interesting study showing that drinking pomegranate juice for two weeks increased testosterone levels by 24% in test subjects. It was a pretty small sample size, so it's by no means conclusive, but definitely pretty interesting. Overall, I'm putting pomegranates in the B tier. Next, we have raspberries. Now, raspberries are a good source of vitamin C. They have a good amount of manganese. They're also loaded with fiber. They're one of the highest fiber fruits. Loaded with antioxidants, quercetin, elagic acid, anthocyanins, polyphenols, they're one of the highest fruits in overall antioxidant activity. I'm going to put these in the A tier. While we're on the subject of berries, I'm going to make a slight adjustment here. I don't know what I was thinking, putting blueberries in the A tier. It was just spur of the moment. I'm moving this to the S tier. This is the first movement we've ever made on these tier lists, but it had to be done. Anyhow, red grapes. So red grapes are not super high in any vitamins or minerals. They're actually really low in fiber as well. It's pretty much just straight sugar. 
They do have a decent antioxidant profile. Um, they have something called resveratrol, which is in the skin of the red grapes, and it's a pretty unique antioxidant. Grapes are going to be by far the best source of it. Uh, it. Protects against aging, heart disease. It's good for your brain. Red grapes also have anthocyanins and flavanols. They're also a symbol of royalty in ancient Egyptian culture, so that's pretty cool. Like you know, you're you're eating your red grapes, feeling like an Egyptian prince. So definitely some aura there, but I'm gonna put it in the C tier. It's pretty average. Next, we got mangoes. Now, mangoes are okay. They're a little bit overrated. Um, so looking at the vitamins, it's a solid source of vitamin C. It's got a small amount of vitamins A and E. It's got some folate. For minerals, it's got some copper. Not much else going on. In terms of fiber, it's low. It's definitely a higher sugar fruit. It does have a unique antioxidant called mangiferin, which is good for your brain. It's also shown to have anti-cancer effects. Mangoes are also high in kerosene, catechins, gallic acid. Overall, it's a little bit overrated, pretty average. I'm going to put it in the C. No, we can put it in the B tier. Next, we have coconut. Now, coconut's not too rich in vitamins and minerals. It does have some copper and manganese, but kind of like the avocado, which we went over in part one, it's more of a fat source. So coconuts are one of the best sources of a powerful fatty acid called MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, things like lauric acid, great for cognitive performance, great for your gut. Also, coconuts are just very versatile. They can make coconut water, coconut oil. And yo, the aura with coconuts is potentially unmatched. Like sitting on the beach in the tropics, under a palm tree, sipping on a coconut, getting that vitamin D from the sun. That might be the highest aura of any fruit we've covered so far, besides obviously the kiwi. Uh, overall, I'm going to put coconut in the B tier. Go in the B tier. Next, we have cherries. Now, cherries are one of my personal favorite fruits, frozen cherries specifically. I could eat those things all day. Unfortunately for me, it's not too high in many vitamins and minerals. It has a little bit of vitamin C, a little bit of copper and potassium. It's not super high in fiber, but it does have a lot of unique benefits. It's got anthocyanins, kerosene, polyphenols. It is one of the more antioxidant-rich fruits. It's also one of the best natural sources of melatonin, so it can help with sleep quality. I'm going to put this in the B tier. Next, we have plums. Plums are such a random fruit. Um, on the vitamin side, not much going on at all. It has pretty insignificant amounts of vitamin C and K. On the mineral side, also not much at all. It does have a small amount of copper. As for fiber, extremely low in fiber as well. It does have some good antioxidants like anthocyanins, kerosene, and polyphenols, but the overall antioxidant activity is just okay. Um, this is pretty... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in a D tier. That's a D tier. Next up, we have pears. Now, pears are pretty similar to apples. They don't have many vitamins at all. They don't have many minerals at all. They have an even weaker antioxidant profile than apples. They do have a decent amount of fiber, just like apples do. Um, but yeah, this is just like an apple clone. I think it tastes a little bit better, but this is still a D tier fruit. Next, we have the tangerine. Now, this is easy. It's basically just a slightly less nutrient-dense orange, which I went over in part one. So I think it's fair to put the tangerine in that same tier as the orange. Let's go in B tier. Next, we have the apricot. Now, apricots are pretty well-rounded. On the vitamin side, they got a little bit of vitamin A, a little bit of vitamin C, decent amount of vitamin E. The mineral side, they're actually a really good source of potassium. They got an average amount of fiber. Um, it does have some flavonoids, beta carotene, lutein, zeaxanthin, but overall below average antioxidant profile. I think we can put this in the B tier. It's, it's solid. Next, we have guava. Now on the vitamin side, guava has about three times as much vitamin C as an orange. So it's a great thing to eat for immune health. It's one of the best sources of vitamin C. On the mineral side, it's also really high in potassium. Got a lot of copper, super high in fiber. It's got like nine grams of fiber per 100 calories, which is really good. Also pretty high in antioxidants. It's one of the best sources of lycopene. It's got kerosene, elagic acid, catechins. 
Mm-hmm. I think we might need might you say mm-hmm. S tier. Let's go. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want me to keep going, subscribe and I will do a part three. Kiwi gang, we out.